Welcome back. So our pancreas is a vital organ that's often left out of the conversation until something goes wrong with it. Well, here to tell us more about this key part of our body and what signs to look out for if something is in fact isn't right with our pancreatic health is GBMC's Dr. Paul Solano. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. So what is the pancreas and what does it do for the body? Well, the pancreas is a major organ in our body that sits somewhere between our stomach and the spleen and the upper mm -hmm. abdomen. The pancreas really has two functions. One is, is an organ of digestion. So it makes different things, enzymes that help us digest food properly. The other part of it that I think many people know about is it makes insulin and other types okay. of hormones that help to regulate our blood sugars and other things. So what happens when something goes wrong with the pancreas? Well, there's a number of things that can go wrong. I mean, I think everyone is fairly familiar with diabetes. Mm -hmm. It's a very common uh, problem in our society. But the, what happens in pancreatic cancer, and that's where mo and most of the, the, the tumors of the pancreas really occur in the part that helps us with digestion. Okay. So as that, the, the pancreatic cancer develops, it can affect other, uh, many things, including our digestion. So what are some of the symptoms to look out for? The big symp the symptoms, unfortunately, with pancreatic cancer are often very vague. Uh, mm -hmm. Loss of appetite, uh, some vague abdominal pain or cramping, occasionally diarrhea, occasionally back pain with uh, pancreatic cancer. So it's, it's kind of a sneaky illness in the sense that uh, there aren't a lot of early warning signs. So talk to us about diagnosing it then. How do you figure out that that's what's wrong? Well, often uh, patients may have things like indigestion, some mm -hmm. vague abdominal pain, they're losing weight, no one can explain exactly why. And so from that, it really uh, takes really uh, some specialized tests. Mm -hmm. uh, often people have an endoscopy where they, people look into the stomach itself to see if there's a stomach problem. And then if that's unrevealing, then uh, an abdominal CAT scan or ultrasound is done to really determine is there something wrong with the pancreas because someone has to be suspicious of it. Uh, from that, you know, we never make a diagnosis of cancer mm -hmm. unless we actually have a, a biopsy uh, because the, the biopsy really tells us that it is cancer and really the kind because there's a couple of different types of uh, pancreatic cancer that can be found. Uh, and so that biopsy is either determined by uh, ultrasound, by mm -hmm. the uh, ultrasound guided biopsies or from endoscopy or sometimes through CAT scan guided biopsy. So what are some of the treatment options if it isn't that cancer? Yeah, I think it, it first there's a couple of things. One is it really depends on the type of pancreatic cancer. Okay. If it's the most common form, what's called adenocarcinoma of the pancreas, which is from the part of the pancreas that makes, uh, that makes the digestive enzymes, then there's one approach. If it's another, the other type, which are called neuroendocrine tumors or carcinoid tumors, it's really treated somewhat differently. Although the basic approach really for both are sort of the same in the sense that, number one, you want to know, number one, is it cancer, the, right. the kind of cancer it is. And then the next phase is you want to know the stage of it, the kind of where, where is it? Because the primary thing for pancreatic cancer really is surgery. And mm -hmm. one of the things that we want to know very quickly, is this something that can be removed surgically, so-called resectable? or is this unresectable? Is it more advanced and then requires other types of treatments? So number one is, is it something localized? Unfortunately, with pancreatic cancer, most are not resectable, most mm -hmm. are, are not localized and, don't re and, and really would not benefit from surgery. Uh, we obviously always want to give people the benefit of the doubt for, for surgery if possible, but the surgery is a, is a difficult surgery that has right. potential complications, so you don't want to do things that aren't going to help people. So if, we, if we're not going to do the surgery, are there any clinical trials or any other kind of treatments? Yeah, well there are treatments, and certainly the, the major treatment for pancreatic cancer has been the use of, of chemotherapy, and we have certainly have had some fairly significant advances in treatment using standard chemotherapy drugs mm -hmm. uh, that, that can help patients. In addition to radiation, which is also something that can be very useful, particularly when pain is an issue. Uh, in terms of clinical trials or, or new things out there, uh, there is two new things which have been very important. One has been the use of immunotherapies, and in some cases, 
pancreatic cancer does lend itself to use of the newer immunotherapy drugs uh, that can help patients that are less toxic and, in a sense, mm -hmm. more helpful for patients. Uh, the other has been certain what do we call now targeted therapies because there are certain mutations that can occur uh, in uh, what's called the BRCA gene, which mm -hmm. can help to treat patients with these diseases with, with pills, which is quite interesting and actually can be helpful. Um, so talk to us about, uh, I guess, becoming diagnosed early. Is there a way that you can kind of test for it early? Well, there, there is no specific test for early, early tests. There are things that are sort of risk factors mm -hmm. for pancreatic cancer. Uh, one is, is unfortunately age, <laughs> so it tends to, pancreatic cancer tends to occur in people more in their 60s or 70s, not so much younger people. It's very unusual to occur in a younger person under 45, say. Uh, but uh, patients who have diabetes, particularly uh, the sort of diabetes that's all of a sudden, like all of a sudden they have change in their, in their blood sugars, that's, okay. a, that's kind of a tip. People who have had chronic problems regarding their pancreas, Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other is that is actually more recognized as really family history uh, oh. in terms of is there a family history of pancreatic cancer or some related cancers. Even uh, there, the, I mentioned the BRCA gene, mm -hmm. which is really more associated with breast cancer, right. but actually is also associated with pancreatic cancer. So if you have a family that has a lot of patients with, with BRCA, who are BRCA, mm -hmm. they, they really or someone that you can at least be hot, more suspicious if they're having these kinds of symptoms and sometimes uh, checked. Okay, so before we go, uh, we, we all know Alex Trebek was recently diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. He now says that he's near remission. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? Well, what it means is, and I have to say, I'm not familiar with all Alex Trebek's deta details right. of, his, mm -hmm. of his case, but you know, when re remission, or what I think of as near remission or partial remission, is when the cancer has been treated generally with chemotherapy, unless he's on some clinical trial where the cancer has shrunk down to a point where you can either not see it or barely see it mm -hmm. under some scan or blood test. And uh, so it tells us that that's always positive. When patients are responding to treatment, it's always a positive thing. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't mean necessarily that you're cured. And so that will be, he'll, it'll be involved, like with many patients in this situation, we follow very close follow-up and, and careful things. And hopefully, you know, there are always someone, even though there's the prognosis for pancreatic cancer is never that wonderful, but there's always hope. And there's always these patients that do well long-term that, that for, you know, that, that do. So it's always, you know, try to be very positive in helping people in this situation. And if any of our viewers have any questions or they want to get in touch with you, they can just go right to GBMC. Yes, they can. Yes, there are, we have our website, and certainly we're always available for questions and, and consultation. Dr. Solano, thank you so much for being here with us today. You're welcome. You're welcome. Very nice. Thank you very much.